Hi, this is David Bonacciolo. Welcome to video 8A, which is the first of five devoted to the investment management topic in the 2012 FRM. Of course, that's part two. And because we always go in sequence, we start with the first two readings, which are frankly not the strongest readings in the investment management topic. The Grinold chapter 14 remains from prior years. GARP appears to be winnowing down or reducing the uh, the amount of Grinold. Last year we had Chapter 14 and another chapter, a, hard, a difficult Chapter 17. That Chapter 17 was eliminated. What's uh, there's what's left is Chapter 14 in portfolio construction, and then uh, Fama French on the capital asset pricing model. Um, so obviously the FRM makes a, a fairly big deal about the uh, capital asset pricing model. Chapter 14 on portfolio construction, not quite to the aims, but rather just some of the setup because we have a chapter that's assigned and it relies on some of the reading chapters in the Grinnell book before it. So Grinnell's a difficult book and it's hard to just jump right into the chapter 14 that it's assigned. So I consider this assignment fairly odd, just like I consider the Cap M assignment fairly odd. But um, a basic idea in Grinnell here is this formula here where the expected return of the security is going to be the function of this familiar linear model. You'll notice it's um, it's we've got a risk-free rate. I always use the notation of the assignment. So normally I'd prefer to use uh, R sub F to connote the risk-free rate because we're familiar with that. But the uh, the authors here use a risk-free rate. So that's pretty common in terms of our linear multi-factor models. And then they've got a beta times here mu of B, which in their language borrows from cap M. So if you just stop right here, you can notice how we're pretty much at the cap M. And so what they what their Grinnell is doing is basically extending the cap M into a multi-factor Cap M and APT model as the basis for attributing the returns. So here we've got the risk premium, you know, exposure to a factor. And then it's just that it's part, it's broken out with an additional term that they call the exceptional benchmark return. So that's the difference between the expected excess return on the benchmark in the near future and the long run expected excess return. So we could think about this as a timing factor. If, if uh, without it, maybe we have a sort of we have really sort of a long term, long run cap M. But the idea is here as well. Maybe if that cam, cap M is informed by an exposure to a uh, risk factor, a risk premium that's more long term in nature, maybe in the near term, in the next year, there will be something an, an abnormal or an excess, and we capture that in its own factor. And then alpha, the expected residual return. So you've got the alpha. Now the alpha is important, is significant in these uh, multi-factor cap M or APT models. Um, because in the uh, ex post regression, the alpha is the intercept. And so that's generally, if we if I could if I could be superficial for a moment. We'll generally say that when regressing excess returns against either just the uh, market excess return as a single fa under a single factor cap M or under a multi-factor model, we regress and then the intercept. If we think about that in regression terms, univariate or multivariate, it's going to be the component that is not explained by exposure to the other common factors. So that alpha. That's going to be what we think of as hedge fund alpha. So alpha, unless there's something more specific or some caveats associated with it, we can generally think of alpha as the regression intercept, or more specifically, the intercept and the run the regression of portfolio returns against the selected common factors, whatever they are, even if they're only the single factor in the cap M. And so.